designandmake.com. Let's have a look at the level effect called mirror mode and see how we can use it to expand the possibilities of your clip art. Just like any of our level effects, you can get access to these by right clicking on any level and choosing mirror mode. This affects all of the 3D content on that particular level. Let's choose to mirror left to right. The first thing you'll notice is that the result of the mirroring happens in the 3D view, but the 2D view stays exactly the same. You should also notice that the icon for that level has changed to reflect the type of mirroring that you're doing. Let's have a look at right to left. And then we'll look at top to bottom. And again, you'll see that the icon for that level has changed. Now let's try bottom to top. Now let's have a look at the top left quadrant. And again, you'll see that the icon has changed. I find these the most exciting options that you have here. I have to admit, sometimes you get some really unique results. And you can switch off mirror mode by choosing no mirroring. That was only a brief overview of mirror mode. If you need more information, there'll be a link below in the description to a video that'll give you a whole lot more help with it. Let's have a look at how we can use mirror mode to resize a frame. Now let's have a look at VCarve Desktop and how we can take a frame and size it to be a square frame, but without the use of mirror mode. And up until now, this was the only option that you had. So we're gonna create a new file. And it's just gonna be a square file. It doesn't matter the dimensions of this. This is just as a demonstration. But I do wanna point out that we need to make sure that our modeling resolution is set to very high because we're using 3D content in this project. So we'll just click OK. I'm gonna go to my clip art tab and have a look at the Africa Big Five model project from Design and Make. And we're gonna take a look at this African themed frame. So let's just double click on that and bring it into our job. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and grab this corner handle here. And I'm gonna size this up to be right about there. And then we'll tile our views. That's a really nice rectangular frame. And that was the way I designed it to be was a nice rectangular frame. But if I want to turn it into a square frame, the only options I have right now or before mirror mode were to grab either the top or the bottom handle or left and right and stretch it to fit a square. So let's just go ahead and try that. If I hold down my shift key and we'll drag it up to look like a square. This is just an approximation. But you'll see that in our 3D view, what's happened. The top and the bottom of our frame have been stretched to be thicker while our left and our right parts of our frame stayed the same. And also you'll see that our triangles have gotten much taller and visually slimmer on the top and bottom. And on the left and right, they've gotten much taller and wider looking than what they were originally. Now let's have a look at how we can do this using mirror mode. Let's start a brand new, fresh instance of vCarve Desktop. Now what I'm gonna show here in vCarve Desktop can be done in vCarve Desktop, Pro, and obviously Aspire. So we're gonna create a new file. And we're gonna go ahead and just make sure it's a single-sided job and it's square. So 10 by 10 is fine for now. And three quarters of an inch is perfect for a material thickness. Now what I wanna do is I wanna create a frame that will house a five inch by five inch photo. We're gonna zero off our material surface and the middle of our job is perfect for this demonstration. Again, make sure you have a very high modeling resolution and Canadian maple is fine. So we'll just click okay. Now let's draw a square. That's gonna be drawn from the center of our job, so zero, zero, and it's gonna be five inches in width and five inches in height. And we'll create that and we'll close that. Now that's the size of our photo. Now obviously, if we're putting our photo in from the back, our actual frame hole needs to be slightly smaller. So if we go to our clip art tab and we bring in the Africa theme frame, and we're gonna go ahead and position that so that the top corner of this box, that rectangle or that square that we drew a second ago is tucked in behind the frame where we want it to be. And I think that's perfect right there. And I'm pretty happy with the thickness of my border, but I think I might wanna make it a little bit thicker. So let's just scale up my frame a bit. And we're gonna make that 
a little thicker. That looks good now. That thickness is fine here and there as well. And because I scaled it up proportionately, then these are the same as what they were originally. Now, you'll notice that my frame is offset from the center of my job, and that's okay. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So if we go ahead and turn on our tiled view, left and right, and we go to our modeling tab, and we're gonna go ahead and change this level into a mirror mode level. Right click on that, go down to mirror mode, and I'm gonna to choose to mirror my top left quadrant. So you'll notice that in the 2D view, nothing will change, but in the 3D view, you're gonna see an instant update. And now I have a square frame. Now, one thing that's interesting about this that you'll probably notice right away is that if we take a look at this frame, we'll make it full screen for us so we can see it better, is that although it mirrored it perfectly, there's a little bit of a flaw here. Then the top, the triangle is a little bit shorter and so on. It, that, that doesn't bother me, but if you wanna make it a little bit more precise, then all we need to do is retile our views, grab our 3D model, and we just start to use our cursor keys and we'll just kind of step it over a little bit till we get the that triangle in the middle approximately the right size. And you'll see that it's starting to double up a little bit there. So if we zoom in in our 2D mode, we can make it a little bit slightly smaller step. And there we have it. And I think that's perfect. And the back of our frame will be okay. Now the next thing you might want to ask is, that's great. In my 2D view, I can see this nice rectangular frame, but in my 3D view, it's square. So if I want to do a profile cutout, how am I going to be able to get a vector that's all the way around that particular frame without knowing exactly what the dimension of it is. Well, I could draw one quarter of it and flip it over and flip it down, and that would do the job. But our developers have been much, much smarter with that. So if I choose this component and I go ahead and create a vector boundary from this component, you'll see what happens. It creates what you see in the 3D view so this square here is the actual size of what you see in the 3D view, which is perfect. Now, the next thing you might want to ask is that's, again, that's perfectly fine, that's great. Now I can do a profile cut, but what about the inside of my frame? I don't want to bother cutting that all in 3D. I just want to cut out the outside of the frame. And then I also want to use a profile cut on the inside so I can just cut right through this and not have any material in the middle so my picture will show through. Well. I'll show you how you can do that as well. If we choose that component and I go to my drawing tab, I can go ahead and choose a bitmap trace. I'm gonna choose the color trace and I'm gonna go ahead and choose, just selectively go across the colors until I find the one that is the color of the center of this. And that's perfect. So we'll go ahead and preview that and we'll apply that and we'll close that down. Now, when I did that, I got some extra, extra vectors I don't want. So I'll select that. I'll right click on that and I'll ungroup it back onto its original object layers. Holding down my shift key, I'm gonna unselect the vector I wanna keep, which is the middle one, and I'll press delete on my keyboard to get rid of the rest. Now what I wanna do is I only wanna keep this quarter of that particular vector. And the easiest way to do that is to go to your modeling tab and hide your original component. That way we don't see that anymore. And I can zoom in, select that middle vector, go into node mode by pressing N on my keyboard, and I'm gonna hover over that line right there, and that guideline is the center of my job, and I'm just gonna press C on my keyboard, and that will cut that vector there. I'm gonna do the same here, press C on my keyboard. That's great, and now I have that one little corner. So let's select this extra bit we don't want. I'll press delete and get rid of it. Go back to my drawing tab, choose my pick tool, grab this, and I'm gonna copy it across my job, so let's just go ahead and do that. We're gonna copy, flip horizontally across our job, but I wanna make sure it's a, about our job center and I wanna create a mirrored copy. And we're gonna flip that. That's great. So let's grab those two, we're gonna right click and we're gonna join those together. We're just gonna move our endpoints. Now we're gonna flip it top to bottom. Again, grab those two by holding down my shift key, right click and we're gonna join those, move our endpoints and we're gonna make sure that's been closed off by moving our endpoints again. We'll close that. And now we have a vector that will actually, we can use to cut out the center of our frame, go back to our component tree again and turn back on our 3D component. And we can use this vector now to cut out the center of our frame. 
Now you can use this for all kinds of different frames. Not only a square frame, if you want to take a rectangular frame and turn it from a four by seven into a three by six, then you can do that. And by using the same process, you can make sure that you retain the thickness of your frames outside edge and that won't get skewed or changed at all. In our next example, I'll show you how to make a matching rosette using a textured panel. And for this next demonstration, we're going to bring up a new fresh version of VCarve Desktop again. We're going to create a new file. Now I think to make a rosette for a corner of a window frame or for a door frame, about five inches square would be kind of nice. So again, single-sided job. We're gonna start out by making this six by six. We'll make it three quarters of an inch again. We're gonna zero off our material surface, datum set to the center. Again, we're using 3D content. So we wanna make sure we have a modeling resolution that's very high. Canyon Maple is fine. And then we'll press okay. Let's go to our clip art tab and we're gonna to need to find a textured panel. So I think that down in the project called mother's garden number three we've got this lovely panel right here and we're going to choose to use this textured panel right here which happens to already be a square but that doesn't matter this will work fine for any of them let's double click on that if we take a look and tile our views you'll see that we have this nice textured panel in our 3d view which looks great but if we wanted to make a rosette out of this that only used this piece, this one little part here, how we go about doing that. Well, the first thing we want to do is like we did with the frame, we're going to draw a square that's the right size for this. And again, just happens to be that five by five is already set up here. So let's just go ahead and create that. And now what we want to do is close that down and zoom out a little bit. And we're going to position our corner of our panel in the corner of that square that we just created. We're just going to zoom in and the more you zoom in, the closer you get. If you use your nudge or your arrow keys and your keyboard, you get smaller nudges. So we're going to go ahead and just nudge that into place. So it looks really good right there. And then what we want to do is turn on our mirror mode. So let's go to our modeling tab. And again, we're going to right click on this level, go to mirror mode, and we're going to do our top left quadrant again. And then all we're going to do is we're going to stretch this out to the point that we end up getting just one of those X's inside of the square. Now, my little tip for you here is if you can't quite see the square that you drew because it's black on black, what you can do is go up to your layers and change the color of your layer to something you can see a little bit better. Maybe green would be good. And now we can see that. So just go ahead and move that by mistake. So I'm gonna undo that. And we're gonna grab this and we're gonna size it up to the point that we only have one X in that box. Now you'll see you come up with all kinds of interesting different designs as you go, but we're interested in only getting one X inside of there. I'm just going to keep sizing that up until we get the right thing in there. I'm looking at the center of this to make sure that it's the right size here. And there we have it. I think that looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and we can cut that and we have a rosette that matches this panel. And if we chose to finish a room or a, a box with this particular design, then you could use this technique to size down this panel or size up this panel so that you can get some different smaller panels that you can use elsewhere. And this is the perfect technique. If you see a textured panel somewhere and you think to yourself, I love it, but I only want it to be a square, but I want to keep everything in the proper proportion. And this will do it for you. As a bit of a bonus, I'm gonna take a minute and show you how to take the garden sign from in the Magical Garden free model project and make it a little bit taller. Okay, for this last one, again, we're gonna use VCarve Desktop. Let's create a new file. And I'm really not gonna but let's just for the fun of it, make it 12 inches by 10 inches. And we'll make it three quarters of an inch thick. That's fine. We'll zero off the top of our material from the center of our project piece, we are going to use a very high modeling resolution like we always do with 3D content, and we're going to use Canadian Maple, and we're going to click OK. 
Let's go to our clip art tab and let's go find our In the Magical Garden project. Here we are. And we're going to bring in this garden sign and we're going to size it up to be approximately the width of our job, which is right there. Now, I like the size of this, but what I want to do is I want to stretch it up and I want to make it so I can put a little bit more text into it. Well, if we go ahead and tile our views and have a look at this, again, without mirror merge, if I hold down my shift key and drag this up, you can see that I can do that, but then things get a little bit pulled out of shape. So I don't want to do that. So if I use my mirror mode, I can go ahead and mirror that from top to bottom. And then what I can do is I can grab this. I'm just using my cursor keys. I can slowly nudge it up and you'll see what happens now. My sign is starting to stretch out. Now there's with this particular model, at some point you're going to start to see this bracket coming back into my 3D layout again. And I may or may not want that, but what I suggest you do is to try it and see what happens. So if you did want it a little bit taller, then what you can do is just keep wiggling it up and you'll see that at some point it just looks like there's another metal bracket there. And you could make almost a square sign out of that one garden sign, which I think is pretty neat. The best way to understand how this works is to play around with your mirror mode. I highly suggest that you play around with some of the flourishes that you would have gotten free with your software. You're going to come up with some really unique layouts. Whether you're mirroring left to right or top to bottom, it's going to be a pretty exciting time for you to see how you can reuse your clip art in new and exciting ways. Now on April the 22nd, on Design and Make's Instagram feed, I'm going to be hosting a question and answer period with regards to anything that you saw in this video. Please bring along your questions if you'd like, or you can post your questions below in a comment and I'll bring those along with me. If you happen to miss that question and answer, please go ahead and put your questions or comments in a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please, I hope that you have fun. Keep making, and most importantly, be safe.